Your $1,000 Faraday cage won't save you. Here's why. When an electromagnetic pulse hits, it's not about how much you spent on protection. It's about understanding what EMP actually destroys and what it leaves untouched. And the stuff it can't touch? You can buy it for a buck at any dollar store in America. Let me show you how to build an EMP-proof survival kit using nothing but cheap plastic and physics. Here's the thing nobody tells you about electromagnetic pulses. An EMP is what happens when a nuclear weapon detonates in the upper atmosphere or when someone triggers a specialized device designed to fry electronics. It releases a massive burst of electromagnetic radiation that induces voltage spikes in anything with a circuit. Your phone? Dead. Your car's computer? Fried. That fancy solar generator? Paperweight. But here's what EMP can't kill. Anything purely mechanical. Anything that doesn't rely on semiconductors. Anything that operated before 1960. The cold does not discriminate based on price tags. Neither does electromagnetic radiation. It just follows physics. Method 1. Wind-up flashlights. These ugly plastic things are nuclear-proof. The mechanism inside is purely mechanical. You turn the crank, it spins a dynamo. The dynamo generates electricity in real time. No battery to fry, no circuit to overload, just gears, magnets and Faraday's law of induction. Pick up five. They're a dollar each. Method two, mechanical can openers. Your electric can opener is a luxury item that stops being luxury the second the grid dies. This stamped steel piece of garbage will outlast civilization. It's a lever and a wedge. That's physics from ancient Greece. No EMP in history has ever stopped a lever from working. Buy three. Leave one in your car, one in your bag, one in your kitchen. Method three. Manual pencil sharpeners. You need to write. Maps. Coordinates. Messages. Plans. Your phone's notes app is gone. Your computer is gone. But this little cone of blades, it's just rotating cutters on a hand crank. Mechanical advantage applied to wood and graphite. It works the same way it did in 1900. Method 4. Spring-loaded kitchen timers. Time matters when you're rationing fuel or cooking over open flame. These things are just wound springs releasing energy through an escapement. Same principle as a mechanical watch, but you can drop it in mud and it still functions. No battery, no circuit no problem. The spring doesn't care about electromagnetic fields. Method 5. Mechanical bathroom scales. You need to track body weight during long-term crisis. Malnutrition sneaks up on you. These work on spring compression. Step on the platform, it compresses a spring, the spring moves a dial. Pure mechanical feedback, no electronics to fry, costs three dollars, tells you if you're dying slowly. Method 6. Pulleys and rope. Dollar stores sell plastic pulleys designed for clotheslines. They're garbage tier quality, but they're also mechanical advantage in its purest form. You need to move water, you need to lift supplies, you need to build shelter. A pulley doesn't care about EMP. It cares about friction and tension. Buy the rope too. Ten feet of nylon cord for a dollar. It's not climbing grade, but it's load-bearing enough for most tasks. Method 7. Mechanical whistle. Communication after EMP is your biggest problem. Your radio is dead, your phone is dead, cell towers are dead. But a whistle is just shaped air resistance creating acoustic resonance. Physics that's been working since humans discovered hollow reeds. Three blasts means distress. One blast means attention. It carries for miles. Costs 50 cents. Method 8. Magnifying glass. Fire is life. Your lighter runs out. Your matches get wet. Your fancy ferrocerium rod wears down. But a curved piece of glass focusing sunlight? That's been starting fires since the Romans figured out lenses. Dollar stores sell reading glasses. Those are just magnifying lenses. Take the strongest prescription you can find, typically plus three or higher. Pop the lens out. Now you have a fire starter that works as long as the sun exists. Method 9. Mechanical egg beater. This is a force multiplier. You need to mix things. Rehydrated food, medical solutions, improvised compounds. Your immersion blender is dead. But this is gears converting rotational motion into high-speed beating. It's engineering from the 1800s. Still works, still cheap. Method 10. 
analog meat thermometer. Food safety doesn't disappear during collapse. It gets more critical. You can't afford food poisoning when hospitals are dark. These work on bimetallic strip expansion, two metals bonded together that bend at different rates when heated. Pure thermal physics, no battery, no circuit, just materials, science doing what materials science does, costs $2, prevents death by undercooked protein. Method 11, spring-loaded clothespins. These are clamps, improvised tool holders, wound closures if you sterilize them, cable management. They're spring-loaded tension devices. The spring is just stored mechanical energy. EMP doesn't affect stored mechanical energy. It affects flowing electrical energy. Buy a whole bag, 20 clothespins for a dollar. You'll find 30 uses you didn't expect. Method 12, manual stapler. You need to attach things, papers, maps, improvised repairs, fabric. This is just a lever driving a metal fastener through material under spring tension. Mechanical advantage applied to joining materials. Same principle as a medieval crossbow, smaller scale. Works after EMP the same way it worked before. Method 13. Plastic tops. These aren't mechanical, but they're EMP proof by default because they're literally just woven plastic. No electronics to fry, no circuits to overload. Just polymer chains in a waterproof weave. Shelter, water collection, ground cover, vapor barrier, signal panel. Emergency stretcher. A 6x8 foot tarp costs $3. Buy 10. Stack them. When the electronic world dies, plastic sheets become structural engineering. Here's what all these items have in common. They're physics without electricity. They're mechanical advantage in its purest form. Levers, springs, gears, thermal expansion, material properties. These are technologies that predate the electronic age and will post-date it too. The preppers spending thousands on Faraday cages and EMP-hardened electronics are preparing for a world that might never exist. You're preparing for the world that absolutely will exist, one where mechanical advantage beats electronic convenience. When the pulse hits and the lights stay off, you won't be the person frantically troubleshooting fried circuits. You'll be the person with the working flashlight, the sharp pencil, the properly cooked food, and the means to signal for help. You're not just surviving, you're outlasting, and you did it for less than 50 bucks.